hao wameongea mbele wamesema ya kwamba watarudi hapa AIC tena and I, I want to say and confirm this is not a chorus that we have rehearsed <laughs> because I was to say the same <laughs> na ile kitu mimi imeniguza sana katika AIC especially hapa milimani I'm an Anglican I go to All Saints and of course the other places in Keharu but I want to loud the kind of praise and worship and choir that is in this AIC milimani I almost thought honorable KJ will enlist to one of the choirs because they are lovely to say the least. Very nice, we feel very blessed. I also want to thank Reverend Munyambo for that very great sermon. It has talked to all of us, and the beauty is that as the Christians of AIC Mirimani are very much aware, it is not a service that you expected His Excellency to be here today. And therefore the sermon is a sermon Nisisi tumeipata haijakuwa prepared because we were coming. And I think that is how God speaks to people. <laughs> Lakini uniruhusu kidogo eh, Reverend Munyambo kwa sababu I've seen the way God have, have blessed, has blessed you in terms of giving sermons in a manner that is captivating. Allow me also to give a rejoinder a little bit. First of all to thank you because when you compared the Philistines and the Israelites, Mimi Niliona, where I was seated with His Excellency, it is the place you pointed as Israel. <laughs> and therefore, those people who are not this side, I think they are Philistines, but I don't want to say which side they are. <laughs> I also don't want to say that the preacher could be seated on that side also. <laughs> Lakini pia hapo umetusomea kitambu na wakakuja na the king said that whoever the party that you read about the daughter na wakakubaliana maneno mingi. Wakakubaliana <laughs> na nikaona kuna watu wanaanza kucheka already. <laughs> Mimi nimejaribu kutafuta pengine utanionyesha Pahali ilisemekana no payment of uh, taxes <laughs> but I'll keep searching <laughs> so I really want to thank you very much for that great sermon Mimi yangu ni machache you know His Excellency the President you are my friend and I know for sure as Honorable for Kasarani has said uh, our captain that God always chooses the right tool at the right time for the right job and I can confirm and I don't want to chest them I'm just saying it in humility that having known the kind of challenges in our country and having known the character of the person leading our country it is clear that God knew the kind of turbulence we are going to face but he also knew that he has the right tool for the job. The country needs a very resolute person and a very bold person, and I am sure we got the best. And His Excellency, Your Excellency, when I was in class six, class six in, a, in primary school, I have an uncle who is still there even now, who was doing some businesses here in Nairobi. And he used to visit us in Moranga in a yellow KUY, a vehicle. The only vehicle any of my uncle had. KUY 216. And when I was in class six, because my uncle was this well-built well, well people, and of course with a public opinion, and that time when we were in class six, you know that the pinnacle of making it, number one, is of course to have a vehicle, and if possible, a public opinion. So, mimi nikaita baraza kwetu nyubani. 
And I told my mother and my father, this family yetu, yule mutu abaye na I look up to is my uncle because he has a vehicle. Na mimi nikisoma historia ya my uncle hajasoma. Hajasoma sana. So mimi nikaambia my mother and my father, since I want to be rich and my uncle is rich and my uncle didn't go to school. Mimi wacha nianze biashara saa hii kwa sababu naona sio masomo peke yake. And I started by the way a kiosk. My father was understanding. I started a kiosk, my first kiosk in class six. Unfortunately, by the time I was reaching class seven, a boy who was becoming number two was depreciating. So my father, of course, told me to ward up the shop, and that was the, uh, the first comma of doing business. So my father realized I had an ambition. Na kuna ile kitu ilikuwa inanifraisha ya kuwa naduka. But he also realized that he had a divine responsibility to raise up a son. And therefore, whatever was fashionable to me then, whatever was good to me then, my father had to make it become a postponement. He had to tell me, yes, it is good, but it's not the right time. Na kaniambia maneno ya biashara kwanza ikwame. His Excellency the President, God has made you the President of Kenya, but also the father of our nation, Kenya. At such a time like this, our country does not need populism, and especially irresponsible populism. My father would have told me, kijana yangu nakupenda, wewe fanya biyashara. But he had a divine role, not just to please me, but to do what is right for my future. Mr. President, you came to a country where our public debt is 9 trillion Kenya shillings. You came to a country where inflation was almost going to double digit. You came to a country where much of the workforce, the able workforce, that if 6% of those who are qualified to work have no jobs. You came to a country where we are not even able to feed ourselves. Mr. President, you had a choice to make us continue in bliss and enjoying ourselves in oblivion or make the hard choice, make us tighten the belt now for us to have long-term stability in the future. And I am glad that is the route you have taken. And I want to request my fellow patriots, my fellow countrymen, it is very easy for a president to please the nation. Very easy. We may not even have to pay taxes. We may not have to do too much. But then what are the kind of countries that are in that kind of situation. And I want you to compare all the countries with very low taxation, we compare with their uh, standards of life. And I agree, and you agree with me, the president has chosen the stability side. And after doing that, what is the situation now? Some of our peers in terms of countries, a country like Turkey, which is part of OECD countries, rich countries, their inflation rate is over 70%. Some of our neighbors here, and I can't mention names, their in inflation is above 33%. As we talked last year, the inflation of Kenya is currently 7.9%. And it is headed even lower, and especially after the blessing of rains. And therefore, Mr. President, me I beseech you as a leader. I know that as a human being, I have come to be compelled to do my bit. But your obligation is bigger than my wish now. And I plead with you, wewe ukwame hapo kwa future ya Kenya, kwa sababu in a year or two, Kenyans will appreciate the reason why we have to tighten our belts. <laughs> the other thing, nastaki kuongea mengi, I have heard many stories out there. People say, you know, we had subsidies, these are the time we had subsidies, that are the time. I am the chairman of budget in the National Assembly. And I want to, call, to, to, uh, to confirm to the Kenyan people, the subsidy you hear that was there, the subsidy in terms of oil, the subsidy in terms of unga, I can confirm even the subsidy of oil is being paid by none other than His Excellency William Ruto and this administration. What we enjoyed then is postponed subsidies. 
enjoyment was then, the payment is now. As we talk, even the subsidy we enjoyed last year, 40 billion shillings in subsidies of fuel, it is being paid by this current administration. And therefore, we are not trying to blame anyone, but it is responsible for us to tell the Kenyan people where we are so that we also appreciate where we are headed. Now, Mimi Niko Nauhakika, Yakwaba Kenya, and all of us will appreciate where we are headed. Yamwisho. His Excellency, the President, you know, one of the major issues in our country is something called inequality, where the gap between the people who have and the people who don't have is too wide. And Mr. President, the only tool that bridges the gap of inequality, the only fair tool of redistribution is education. The other fair tool of redistribution is making sure the population from those who have to those who don't have are healthy. Mr. President, you need resources for all of us to go to school. Even the child of a person like me being brought up when I was young. Mr. President, we have to avail these resources to you so that even the child of a poor person can go to the, uh, the school of their choice. And I am sure you are already doing that. That a third of our budget is going to education and especially to the education of the people who would otherwise not afford education. And I allowed you also, lastly, because of the, of the reforms you are doing in the higher education. I want to show the Kenyan people that previously, you know the majority of the people who are dejected, their children go to day schools. In the recent past, over 5,000 schools in Kenya have not produced even a single student to proceed to universities. The people in day schools are not the people of the people who would afford um, private universities. And the reform the president is bringing is to ensure even that child in day school, somewhere in Karachuonyo, somewhere in Ukabani, somewhere in Muranga, they also have got an opportunity to be what they can be in life. Mr. President, we allowed you.